Thank you so much, Dennis. So, uh, yeah, good evening, everyone. How's everyone going today? Everyone well? Everyone's good? Go home. <laughs> if, uh, I keep on doing this, and I'm waiting till people get catch on. But anyway, if, if, you're, <laughs> if you're good, we don't want you. <laughs> All the people who are happy, well-adjusted, balanced, normal, psh, go away. <laughs> right? We want the losers. <laughs> yes, we want, the, we want those who are messed up, out of control. We want those who are confused and lost. So any people like that can stay. <laughs> so for this evening, what I'll do is I'll, I'll talk for a little bit about, about meditation, then we'll do some guided meditation together, and then we'll have a bit of a Dhamma talk. Okay, now because uh, we're in Australia and at least so far, Australia is still a democracy. And so you're going to vote for what kind of meditation you're going to do. Okay? Isn't that how democracy works? But if I don't like it, <laughs> I'm going to say we're going to do what I choose anyway. That's how like Australian democracy works. Anyway, okay. <laughs> So we're going to have three choices for your meditation. Okay, number one. So I'm going to give two. Okay, number one is is breath meditation. Okay, mindfulness of breathing. Number two will be loving kindness meditation. Okay, so these are two very common meditations. So I'm going to give you those options for those those ones. And number three. Hmm. What should I do for number three? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, for number three, we'll do the four elements. Okay, this is another meditation that we do in Buddhism, the four elements. If you don't know what the four elements are, then you can vote for it and find out. <laughs> okay, so who wants to do breath meditation? Okay, who wants to do loving kindness meditation? All right, hands up high. Fairly popular, okay. And who's going to, who wants to do four, four elements? <laughs> All right? All right? Okay, so clearly we're going to do breath meditation. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's how democracy seems to work these days, right? Anyway. Uh, okay, so four elements. So I'm going, I'll say a few words of explanation to begin, and then we'll start doing it. I, I, I like to do this sometimes because uh, the, the Buddha did teach many different kinds of meditation. So they, they, it's useful to try out some different kinds of meditation and see how it goes. Remember that for this practice we're doing now, it's just it's just a few minutes. Okay, don't have don't have any expectations. All right. Or rather, your expectation should be that your mind will be scattered and your body will be sore and you won't even understand what's going on, right? So if you start with that as your expectation, then maybe you'll exceed it. Who knows, right? So, but what I, what I want to do by doing this is just to give you a taste, give you some kind of idea of uh, what this meditation involves, right? Now, uh, who can tell me what the four elements are? Anyone? Earth, number one. Fire, number two. Water. Air. Ground comes under earth, yeah? Ground, ground's the same thing as earth. But still good, still correct. Okay, so earth, water, fire, and air. So this is basically... Uh, the, the, the three states of matter you have in, 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 like in modern physics, right? You say it's a solid liquid gas. And then heat is the, or fire, is the element that, that transforms one of those states to the other, right? So it's the element of transformation, right? So these, these things, of course, don't just stand for the, the kind of literal earth and literal water and so on, but they mean those qualities. So earth is like the quality of solidity and hardness. Water is the quality of liquidity. Uh, air is that quality of, of gaseousness, but, it's, but especially of, of gas in, in motion, right? So wind. 
uh, and fire, uh, heat, fire is the quality of heat or, or lack thereof. Right? So in, according to Buddhist theory that, that these elements are found in the physical world uh, in different kind of ways, in different proportions. Right? And one of the differences is that whether, whereas in, in, from a Western scientific point of view, we look at these things as being purely objective things, so they're things which are qualities of the physical world, which are independent of us as observers, right? leaving quantum theory aside, but it's just ordinary science, right? so these things objectively exist. From a Buddhist point of view, we look at how they are experienced in the mind. All right? That's what this meditation is about, is how do you experience these properties in your mind? Because this is how we experience this physical world. It's made up of these different elements. And everything that we, that we, we, we see, we hear, uh, we smell, we taste, and we touch of the physical world, all of that is impressions which it comes from these four elements. And so by practicing on these four elements, by meditating on them, you learn to let go. You learn to understand ah, that this is what our material experience consists of. And in particular, what you learn to do is you learn to break down the difference between this world inside this body and the world outside. Yeah? And this is, it talks about this constantly in the Buddhist scriptures, ajatangwa, bahidangwa, internally and externally. Yeah? And so what that means is that the contemplations that the Buddha gave was to look at the ocean, look at all the waters in the ocean, and then you realize that that water in the ocean is actually just the same as the blood and the spit and the sweat inside my own body. Yeah? And so we break down that sense of being separate and having some kind of separate individual self. And we realize that actually we're just part of this much greater whole. Yeah? So this is what that meditation uh, does. Now, now, this is a very rich meditation, okay? And there are many different ways of practicing it. And the way that I'm going to present to you in a minute is just one way. So I'm just going to give you one simple introduction to it. But many, many people will teach this meditation and they'll teach it in many different ways, okay? So it's a very rich one. Uh, but for now, what we're going to do is we're just going to try to focus on, ha for, on the, first of all, getting that initial awareness of these elements inside yourself okay and then the aware the elements outside and being able to be able to break down or dissolve to some degree that distinction okay so that's what we're going to try to do for this meditation okay so let's do some practice please get ready sit in meditation posture if you're not already So sitting quietly, if you need to uh, adjust your posture so that you're sitting comfortably, just sort of make sure that you're, you're reasonably comfortable, reasonably alert. And relax, just and find a a sense of peace inside your body. Don't be fighting with your body while you're meditating.
as you're sitting there, just bring awareness to any feelings, any any emotions, any tension, anxiety, uh, excitement, anything that you're feeling right now, and just acknowledge it. Oh, okay. We begin the meditation on the four elements. We start by focusing on the earth element and the earth element inside your own body. So look at the most obvious example of the earth element in your body, something that's very easy for you to be aware of. Usually the easiest thing to be aware of is your teeth. The teeth are very hard. It has that quality of solidity. And you can feel them in your mouth. And you have an idea of what those teeth are, what they look like. So in doing this meditation, it's partly about uh, the physical touch of these things, partly about the idea of them in your mind or image of them in your mind. It doesn't matter too much how you're aware of them. But just pay attention, see if you can see what they are. And as well as your teeth, and there's the different bones. You just move your awareness around inside your body and focus on the, the hard parts inside your body, the bones, nails. See if you can feel that hardness of them, the solidity.
And then when you have some idea in your mind of that feeling of hardness in your body, pay attention to the hardness in the environment around you as well. Again, start with what's easiest and most obvious, the, f the feeling of hardness of your seat, of the floor. And when you're sitting in a seat, it's almost as if the, the seat is an extension of your own skeleton both working together to hold you up. And that earth element in the floor rests on the great earth, the great planet that we live on. And all around us, the building, the trees, the ground, the roads, the whole planet has that quality of earth, quality of hardness. And that earth element that's inside you and the earth element that's around us is just the same element. It's just earth. It's just solidity. It's just that property of hardness. Now let's turn to the water element. And with the water element, again, begin with the simplest and easiest, which is usually the saliva in your mouth. And so just feel that. It has its own texture, its own taste, its own quality. Imagine what it's like when your mouth is dry. There's no saliva in it. And that's the absence of the water element. And when you do have saliva in your mouth, it's different, it's wet. So what's that like? What's that quality of wetness like? And then when you pay attention to that, you realize that the same water element is throughout your whole body. The forms of it vary somewhat. But it's there in your tears. It's there in your sweat. It's there in your blood. It's there in your urine all the different liquids inside your body. Your whole body is actually soaking. It's like a bag soaking with water. And just as you need the earth element so we can stand upright and keep our shape, we need the water element, otherwise we just crumble up and blow away. And water element's what sticks everything together. See if you can 
extend that contemplation to seeing the water element around you. Maybe it's in a, a glass of water or a bottle of water. Maybe it's in the bodies of the people around you. It's in the moisture in the atmosphere. It's in the clouds, it's in the water in the pipes and the dams. And especially it's in the water in the great ocean. Like all living creatures, we've evolved in the oceans and grown up and emerged from the oceans. And the blood and the water we carry in our veins is still essentially just seawater. And so all that water in the great oceans and all the water you experience in your own body is just water. It's the same element. It doesn't belong to us. It's not anything intrinsic to you. You've just borrowed it for a while. Let's contemplate the heat element or the fire element. So pay attention in your own body to the most obvious form of heat. Usually it might be the sensation of warmth in your body. Or even if there's part of your body that's cold, that's fine too. The absence of heat is also the heat element. And pay attention to that sensation, that idea of warmth. You can feel the outside of your body and the inside of your body, you can feel that, that temperature. Different, different parts of your body will have a different temperature. Sometimes when you pay attention to it, it'll, it'll grow, it'll become stronger. It feels almost like you become hotter just by paying attention to it. So that perception of heat is not exactly the same thing as the, the physical property of heat. It's, it's the physical property of heat as it's perceived by your mind. So it's partly conditioned by the external circumstances, but also partly conditioned by your mind.
and outside yourself. Again, just bring to mind that idea of the heat element around you. The heat in this room is quite, it's quite warm. Outside, the evening's getting cool. And then in the, the world around us, there's these patterns and shifts in heat. It's always flowing. Some parts of the world are baking hot right now. And then there are fires, furnaces, nuclear reactors, engines, fridges, freezers. In the core of our planet, molten rock. Outside in space, absolute zero. And yet all these differences, all these these variations are just the same heat element as you're experiencing right now inside your own body. They have the same property, the same nature. Your body, body is part of that same physical system. And finally, we look at the air element. Inside our body, usually the most obvious example of the air element is your breathing. You can feel it as you're breathing, as the moving of your body, expansion and contraction of your lungs. But it's more than that, isn't it? Because you can feel how that rhythm moves through your whole body. It's not just in your breathing that the air moves. You can also feel like in your stomach the air moving up and down. And different kinds of energies in the body. Once again, compare that with the air outside. And this time it's very obvious because each time we breathe, the air that's outside comes into our lungs. Every time we breathe out, the air inside our lungs goes to the outside. So there's this constant interchange, this constant flow of the outside to what's in, what's in to what's out. And we've been sitting in this room sharing this space now for a little while, all breathing out, breathing in. So by now, we've all breathed in something from each other's breath. So a part of what was in you is now in me. A part of what was in me is now in you. And this air in the room is 
just part of our atmosphere, blowing, shifting, moving right across the world. And those winds that are blowing, they blow over the oceans and they blow over the deserts and they blow over the cities and all of the peoples in the world. And all of the animals are all breathing that same air. So our air, our breath, it's just a little thing. We shouldn't get too much attached to it. We're just borrowing it for a few minutes, a few seconds, and then it's gone. And so now we're coming towards the end of that meditation. And so now we've contemplated each of the four elements. We've contemplated them inside ourselves. And we've contemplated them externally. And we've seen that there's no real difference between the two. That what we call our body here is really just a part of this much greater world. And before we finish the meditation, I want you to reflect back and just, just remember what that experience of meditation was like. Just review it for a minute. What was it like when you began the meditation? What was your mind like? What mood did you have? What were you thinking about? How did your body feel? And as we did the meditation, what was your experience? Could you see what those elements were like or not? Did you feel them or not? Was there any part of the meditation that was especially clear? Any parts that were especially vague, unclear? And finally, we can dedicate the merit of our practice. May all beings be happy. May all beings be well. May all beings realize Nibbana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. <coughs> OK, very good. So please feel free to have a bit of a stretch or something if you want to.